I know you guys are excited because I definitely am. You've been asking for it for quite some time. I've been in contact with one and he's finally available for us to chat to him. Now it comes at a time that's basically perfect, I think, because sitting on top of the, the wicket tally in the four-day competition, it's the perfect time to actually speak to him and get some insight. Uh, the Lions have three out of three wins. They've been excellent in this tournament, a great start to the competition. And we're going to get some insight from him, what it's like to be again in South Africa playing cricket and his career and, and what he learned from England and so many different other things we can speak about. But it's also going to be an opportunity for you guys to ask him questions too. But I want you guys to just hold on quickly. Um, before you ask your questions, let me just have a conversation with him first. This is more of a chat than a conversation than an interview. So I would like you guys just to bear with us, listen to our conversation, listen how we, we chat about different things, and then you guys can get into the questions and ask your questions in the live chat. So that's what we are here for today. But before we get going, uh, I just want to give a quick update on the four-day series as a whole, just to let you guys know what has been happening in the four-day competition. So we know that the Lions beat the, the GBS Rocks by an innings and 30 runs. Then the, the Warriors beat Northwest Dragons by 130 runs. And someone that stood out is a friend of the channel, is Matthew Brietsky. Uh, he stood out over there. Rudy Second stood out over there as well. Um, Nti Nabe, he also stood out with quite a good performance as well. And Makosi as well. And even though um, the captain, Vandenberg, he also put on a, a, a fight with Wesley Marshall as well. But they just couldn't get over the line over there. Uh, they got the Titans against uh, Western Province. I was at the game. Uh, we saw some excellent performances from the youngsters as well with, with Daniel Smith over there. Uh, he got an 83. Calvary got a 50, a fighting 50, but they couldn't hold out. Obviously, the Titans put on a massive score in the first innings and 647 for seven, and they just couldn't uh, compete. Western Province were bowled out twice, so it was... It was uh, unfortunate that obviously Yasin Bari couldn't bat complete, complete the match and uh, they ended up losing that match. Simon Arm obviously standing out in that match as well. And then the, we had the, the Hollywood Dolphins that took on the Knights and we know that that one ended in a draw. A lot of matches have been ending in a draw actually in this particular in the, the series. So And the Lions are sitting very comfortably on the top of it and they will be hoping that they can keep the momentum going. Moving on to Division 2, we had Limpo, uh, Limpopo and Palas. They took on Northern Cape Heat and the match was drawn. Um, there were some interesting performances in that particular match as well, um, especially Aubrey Swanepoel with his 4 for 65. And he also put on a, a neat knock of 44 not out of 50 deliveries as well. Um, and we got Lunga there for 4 for 32 as well. Then Six Gun Grill, Southwestern Districts, they beat the Eastern Storms by 119 runs in that particular match. And then we had the Tuskers that beat Eastern Cape um, by seven wickets. So that was the, basically the round of fixtures. But we're going to zone in, obviously. You guys can go check that out on clickerfanaticsmag.com. If you want all the wraps for every single day, we have every single result on the website. So you guys can go check that out. Before we get going with the interview with Duan, we... I want you guys to please subscribe to Cricket Fanatics Magazine monthly. It's 100% free in your inbox every single month. The link is in the description. So you can just go there, click that, and you'll go straight to that. If you're new to this channel and you haven't subscribed yet, please click subscribe. Please click that notification bell for all future videos. So, guys, I'm really excited about this one. I hope you guys are too. So let's get straight into today's conversation. I hope you guys have your questions ready because this is going to be a good one. A very good evening and welcome to Cricket Fanatics Magazine. This is your daily show. I'm your host, Khalid Moedin, and today I'm with Duan Olifid, our special guest on the show today. Really excited to chat to him. It's been a long time since we caught up. So let's get straight into it. Duan, how are you doing first and foremost? Uh, sitting comfortably on top of the 
of the log over there in the wicket tally. But other than that, how are you doing since you've been back again in South Africa, playing cricket again, and this time for the for the Lions and doing well? That's, um, thank you. I'm I'm very good. Um, I think I just spent some time with my family up in Pretoria, so it's good to see them. I haven't seen them in a, quite a while, especially with COVID and all these things happening. But it's been good. Like I'm enjoying being back in South Africa, enjoying playing cricket again. I think with COVID and all those things back in the, back in the UK, it was quite restricted, um, especially when it first started. And last this past season, didn't play much, and unfortunately, I got injured as well. So I'm very happy to be playing cricket again, and I can't complain. My body's good. I feel good. That's excellent. That's good to hear. And and you have been excellent. And and the Lions have too. So in general. So it's nice to to see that you are performing. I mean, a lot of guys have been have, have been speaking about you throughout this this competition so far. Um and you <laughs> it's fine. Sorry. And no problem. And you're currently sitting on, on, on 20, 20 wickets, um just six innings and, and twelve uh, average of twelve point three oh. Been excellent right through the competition. Uh, what's been the key for your success this comp particular competition? It's quite difficult. Firstly, like at the end of the day, it's a team sport. I know it's individualistic, but I think the past three games, um, everyone from the bowling unit stood up. And like I'm just speaking from the bowling unit now. Um, first game, um, the whole bowling unit stood up. Second game in PE, uh, uh, Sipamla bowled well first innings, Magala bowled well second innings. Um, and Lolly's Lolli always been there contributing. He doesn't always get the rewards probably that he wants, but I think as a whole, bowling unit has been very good and been actually very exciting for me to be a part of. Um, I know Lolly probably the longest. Um, I played against uh, Sisanda and Luto, but I think there's some good experience with some good young blood coming through. And I think for me, it's just where I can contribute towards the team. <clears throat> and if I can help the young guys or even the experienced guys or and vice versa, I think every day you can learn something new. Um, for, and on a personal note for me, I think for me, just personally, is if I can put the team in a good position, we will come out on top and just try to keep it as nice and simple because I think mm. sometimes I've been there where you overthink the game, we overthink mm. bowling, and I think it's actually so bad for you as a player because you, you're you trying to find a way to be better. And I think sometimes you just need to revert back to the basics or think when you've done well, what have you done right, or what you can improve on mm. because on the outside people will automatically see you as the main strike bowler in any unit that you play in but are there any times like for example you spoke about the the, the game against the warriors where um Lutus Pamela stood out are there times how do you switch your role to like supporter do you ever do that like do you ever speak to the guys and maybe according to the captain maybe say okay look here guys I may be not I'm finding my my rhythm as well as someone else, and you switch roles and allow them to take the you know the 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 main strike bowling uh, role in a way. I think uh, let's say uh, let's start from the beginning from, with the new ball. You're always trying to strike early. Um, I think the way the game progress, um, you sort of know if it's not your day, like you need to like scrap ugly for the team. And maybe not concede runs and try build pressure. I think the most important thing is, especially from a bowling unit, if we can bowl in partnership. So I, I spoke to C. Pamela about it quite a bit. Tomorrow might be my day, and then the following day is his. So I think if you can realize and adapt to that quicker, we, as a person, you don't you don't search because then you're costing the team. All right, you're not always going to get it right. Trust me, but I think the beauty of our bowling lineup so far is like we've bowled so well in partnerships, and mm. whenever we we needed someone to strike, they did. I think for me, I could, obviously, how the game 
progress you can sort of you can sort of figure out okay do i need to contain here um are they batting quicker than normal so if you look at the first game against northwest wesley marshall played it looked like he played a t20 game in the four day game <laughs> basically so we were under the pump from the start so in those circumstances you just need to sit in and be patient and in in that way you contain and by doing that you create pressure and maybe put a few guys out on the boundary the sweeper boundaries and maybe just cut off his boundary option and that reverts pressure back on him and i think that's how we got his wicket because he didn't he wasn't scoring as freely towards the end mm -hmm. um i think this obviously we um the pitch play makes a difference but i think the key factor in, of every bowling lineup is if you bowl in partnerships if you do that well because you can bowl great and if your partner leaks it's you it's, all the pressure is gone you're not going to get the wickets or as a team you're not going to get the wickets that you want to strike for to put them back under pressure mm, that's excellent and personally since you've moved obviously to england and stuff like how does you how do you feel your four-day game has developed over time now to this point now do you are you are you feeling more uh, confident and comfortable within yourself um, that you can back your ability and be more consistent? Yes, I think the UK has improved me massively. Um, as you know, I like to bowl short, <laughs> so you can't always do that in the UK because otherwise you will go for runs everywhere. But I think the UK for me personally, um, the, fir the first season. It was quite difficult the first couple of games because you're so used to South African lens. And my focus is trying to go a bit fuller, but still at good intensity. So sometimes I lacked in that where it came out a bit floaty at times. And so there's still days that will, will happen, I think. But for me, the biggest thing is like whenever you want to do something, it's just like I remember like when I was still at the Nights. Alan Donald said to me, just compete every ball. Um, and I think if it's your day or not your day, you just need to keep doing it because it takes one wicket and it's funny how it works and everything clicks and you're just on a the roll then. Um, but coming back to the UK has helped me a lot. Um, obviously playing different conditions with the Duke ball that moves around a lot um, and maps around a lot. So Yes, the Duke ball does swing, but I think if you can get the ball to nip around, I reckon you're more effective. If you look at Jimmy, like Jimmy is mm. so good in, in English conditions. So I think if you just, you need to figure out the balance where there will be days where I think, especially if you play against certain opposition, where if you try to get the ball to nip a little bit more than swing from fuller, because then it happens quickly where if it's a bit short in the UK, it just sits up and it's easier for the batsman to play and you actually give him confidence doing that. Not saying you can't bowl short, but I think where in South Africa, it's a five to six meters is probably the most effective area where there's probably four to five. So for you to identify that, um, was it almost like a, a trial by error type of thing when you moved to England uh, or was it more like they the coaches over there assessed you and said okay look here analyzed you and said this is how you can improve this is how you can't or was it the self-motivation and from yourself to to get you to get there I think it comes from both sides obviously coaches been there they've been there the whole life so they give you as much information as you possibly can get and it's what you take from there I think at the same time just to go over there and try and bowl fuller and where you're so used to South African conditions, you, you're you not going to be as effective because that's not your strength, but you can mm -hmm. you can work on it and nurture it to become a strength of you. And I feel like, especially this season, I'm much fuller than I normally, normally am. I might be wrong. It's just how I see things. So... Um, so I'm I'm happy because it took it took a while to make that adjustment. To be honest with you, um, it's, it's not every game you get it right, but yeah. most often than not, you try to make it work and just make sure you have good energies on the ball 
when you do go fuller, especially in the UK. Yeah. Yeah, because it makes total sense to me. Because if you're in South Africa and, and shorter deliveries are working for you and you're taking 20, 30 wickets a season, then obviously you're <laughs> going to have to be consistent in, in doing that. But then you move away, that must have taught you a hell of a lot. And that's excellent to hear that. Do they, I want to ask you about the coaching differences. Is there, because, you know, te technology and things have, have changed the way people analyze games, etc. Um and we know at the Lions, you guys have an excellent analyst that does video anal analytics. P Dog is his name, of course. Yes, and uh, yeah, so um, when you went to England, uh, before we get to what how P Dog's helped you guys with that, I want to ask you first: In England, was that a main thing there? Video ana analytics, and and are they more advanced when it comes to technical analytics when it comes to technology? I wouldn't say so. There's obviously um, analysts that helps you to get the best out of the wicket, um, the opposition, you name basically everything. Um, and exactly what PDOC does, I think the only thing where I think if you speak about PDOC, where he's done it all over the world and he's done it for so many years. So it's obviously experience. You get experienced players, but you get experienced people doing that work as well. And I think that's why p has been unbelievable. Um, in the UK, I would say it's it's very similar. Um, I think you can have so much technology and saying you need to do this, you need to do that. But on the day, it can be completely different. <laughs> it can be a completely different wicket and then you need to adapt. You need to do things differently. So I think you get as much information as you possibly can um, and you plan according to that. And if it doesn't work, you revisit your plan and see what you can improve on. Or maybe it needs a new plan um, playing against different opposition and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And do you, do you spend personally, because I know some, there's some bowlers that will say that they don't really spend a lot of time analyzing opposition batters, etc. They focus on what they need to do personally and make sure that they hit their markers, etc., and and be consistent. Are you a type of person that prefers to be more analytical and and, and analyze the opposition batters and see where the weaknesses are? Um, no, to be honest, with you, I don't <laughs> like it because it puts too much stuff into my brain. Okay. Um, I just like to keep it as simple as possible. I think wherever you play in the world, top of off. There's always a weakness there. I think if you can test the batsman's technique for as long as possible, um, it's obviously a patience game. Um, I think for certain players it works, for certain players it doesn't work. I think, but the more you play against players, you sort of get you have your own your own like let's say setup of how you're going to get the batsman yeah. out by playing against players for so many years. So you sort of have an idea. But it, it changes because, for example, let's say someone is not good on a short ball and you go with that plan and let's say you worked on it, then <laughs> your plan is sort of out yeah. of the window a little bit. So then you need to adjust to go maybe different or maybe use it as a surprise. So that's where this game is so interesting and mm. so complicated for me i just try to keep it as simple as possible and yeah. just bowl basically of course yeah uh, i mean we're talking about four day cricket now mainly but i i know how successful you were also in the in the t20 arena as well um pre previously at, at many other at teams so when it comes to t20 bowling and and mastering it uh, what sort of things can you take from t20 bowling and what you've learned there into your into your four day game if any I think obviously the pressure is much higher than to four day cricket. Um, um, you, you have to be switched on because if you're not, you can get absolutely murdered all over the park. <laughs> and because especially the batsmen, the batsmen are so good and they hit the ball miles. So I think it's trying to outsmart them and be adaptable as quickly as possible. I think if you play the game, you would know you'll get a feeling okay, the batsman might come after me this ball and then maybe stick to the same or try to change it. I think sometimes it's a catch-22, you know, like 
you stick to your lens as long as possible till you get hit and you get hit and then as any bowler in the world you will change it's just how the game goes like you will change because you think i don't know what like maybe you floss it a little bit or maybe the pressure is there um it can work both ways so i think for me personally in t20 cricket is like you 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 have a plan you have a field especially towards the end and it's don't try to be predictable um it will be days it will work and you look like an absolute zero and the next day you will look like a zero so <laughs> i think it's just staying true to yourself and stick to your strength and and combine it within the team strength i think to any bowler or any player is stick to what you believe in because at the end of the day you back yourself i know people say you know we back you but you need to back yourself first to succeed yeah that's that's excellent insight okay i'm going to get into the fan questions um because i'm and the first one up over here is from whoops i just selected everything that's he says who, who is the toughest batter that you to bowl to around the world that you've that you've already faced <laughs> oh that's a very good question there's so many um actually i will go when i played in south africa because that's where i played most of my cricket i found it difficult to bowl to stephen cook um purely because of the reason you feel like you in with a shot but you don't get him out yeah. and he plays on the crease quite a bit so dean alga is another one because he plays he plays on the crease so you really need to be spot on yeah. where i feel like maybe different other batsmen maybe push at the ball a little bit more and i feel like i'm more in the game where with those two you just sit you need to sit in and be patient like they play they played international cricket as well and they know their game so well in and out so you really need to be on top of it every ball and put pressure on them and hopefully at the end of the day they will make a mistake so um if our international players i felt joe root very good um he plays his swing very well um i played with him at yorkshire and just the way he sets up and stuff like that it's really it's difficult because for me i'm a swing bowler i like to swing the ball and he especially in the uk i feel like they play swing really well yeah. um it's so difficult because you can you know sometimes a number 11 batsman is more difficult to bowl to honestly like i can tell you this past weekend i think it was me i had no clue where to go anymore because <laughs> i got smacked everywhere so it's so difficult because if someone comes out at you and yes at the end of the day he has a bit of luck going his way and sometimes you think okay where now <laughs> so yeah so it's so difficult but i think technique wise i find it difficult to bowl to us too hmm. Well, we knew this next question is going to come up. I thought it's going to come up towards the end of the show, but it's right over here in front of us already. Are you keen to play for the Proteus again, given the opportunity? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good question because at the end of the day, for me, I live in the present where in, in the past I've made a mistake of thinking about the future too far ahead. And that, that's what I've learned the past couple of years, not being here. Um, so i believe everything happens for a reason and if it's meant to be it's meant to be but for my pure focus is just on the lines and i want to do well for lines i want to win trophies for the lines i think for me as a person if i think about too many things then i'm not performing at my at my, at my best and i think it happens with a lot of players where you know sa tours are coming out protest tours are coming up and you think about that and you push for that so hard and you try sometimes too hard and then you don't get the result that you want where it's unnecessary pressure i think um for me they all do every game i play there's always pressure and you put pressure on yourself regardless but i think for me i i just am at the present now and not looking too far ahead mm -hmm. 
Excellent answer. Okay, uh, from Dex, he says, Duan, what are your thoughts on Andrew Nokia and his performances in all formats for the Proteas? I think he's been brilliant, to be honest with you. I think he bowls very quickly. Luckily, I'm not batting. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think he's done really well. Um, he always had the potential to do that, and I'm glad he's done extremely well for the Proteas. He deserves all the accolades coming his way at it unbelievable World Cup. He had two good seasons at the IPL and he's done well in the test arena. Um, I think, you know, for any fast bowler, it's nice to see someone bowling quick and, you know, trying to take the head, heads off. Um, he's, and he's a very good guy as well. So I wish him all the best. And you just hope fast bowlers don't get injured. So that's, that's the only downfall for a fast bowler, if, you know, if you get niggles and stuff like that. But at the moment, he's on fire, especially with KGO as well. So, mm. well, can can you maybe this elaborate on on the niggles part on injuries specifically with fast bowlers? Like, what sort of advice could you give other fast bowlers, especially youngsters? Because we have a lot of them around at the moment, and they're going to be playing a lot of cricket. We've got Cheryl Kutsia, there's Lifa and Tanzi. There's so many young fast bowlers coming through the system. What sort of advice could you give them with regards to managing your injuries and 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 knowing? what to look for and what what signs to look for to pick up with the it's, it's interesting you know it's actually a very interesting topic because you know in the world that we live in today you need to jump you need to jump to get stronger and you sort of don't focus on your bowling workload as much or it's more monitored let me say that mm. where if we look at the 90s early 2000s even in the 80s there wasn't much gym. Yes, guys gym, but they were bowling fit. And I feel, for me personally, I rather want to be day in, day out, 25 hours a day. And I know I can operate at that optimal level and give my best, where if you can only bowl 15 hours a day and you break down, mm -hmm. It's, it's not great for you because first it creates a mental barrier for you because as soon as you get close to it, you're like, oh no, I might break down here. Yeah. But I think, and when you, when you have serious injuries, I think it's always good to take a little bit longer than normal because you want to make sure it doesn't happen again. It doesn't like, for me, I had an injury in the UK this season. I had like a disc problem in my back. And, you know, I felt fine. Uh, I was improving. And the first game back, won that game, my back seized up again. So I was like, well, this was so frustrating. And I was like terrified because I was like, I never had this. And at the end of the day, I just want to play cricket. And I was like, let me just take, you know, do my rehab and jump. And within that, bowl overs, like, make sure I bowl a lot of overs because in UK, I don't bowl a lot of overs. And for me mm. personally, I'm, I'm a guy who loves bowling. I'm a guy who loves bowling a lot of overs. Like you almost, you, you test your boundary. Um, you push yourself to a limit because, you know, there will be days where it's going to be tough. There will be days where, for example, a young guy like Gerald will need to bowl 25 overs. But if his body's not used to it, and he does it for two weeks or three weeks in a row, he is going to break down. Mm. Where if I, for example, me, if I can average close to 25 to 30 overs a game, and that's including practice and, you know, like I know we haven't bowled much at the Lions, luckily, but if you can push yourself and bowl more frequently within the game and push yourself maybe longer spells and stuff, it helps with your bowling fitness. And I think you now I, I spoke to Carl Abbott, I spoke to many other bowlers and they're like, bowling fit is so key. And in that way, I'm very old school when it comes to that. Like, pre yes, you have your off seasons where you can work in the gym and get stronger. By all means, don't, do not throw away jump. But I think when it's, let's say about a month and a half before season, like really work, push your body to bowl a lot mm. and i know you'll be stiff trust me i hate preseason 
because it's like I can't walk the next day. That's why I just like playing cricket all year round. But I think it's so important to bowl a lot of overs because mm. if you want to play at test level like any player would want to play, you need to be fit. You can't bowl 15 overs and then pull out, you know, um, or be like, I might get injured, yeah. Because it will be, you will be playing in India or wherever and it will be required from you to bowl so much. And you need to know your body can handle that. Awesome. Okay, one of your big fans over here that has been asking for you, how often do you get to train in the nets considering workload management? And how do you maintain your skills if you don't really get to bowl as much in the nets? Look, so for example, let's take these past three weeks. Um, the, so let's say we start on a Thursday. Uh, Monday, we'll generally have off if the game went till Sunday. Tuesday will be a hard day in the net. So for me, tomorrow will be a good practice session again, where it goes six overs, let's say six overs at 100% intensity, because it's very important you need to maintain that intensity. So if you feel like you're slacking off, maybe go a bit less, but make sure if it's not four overs, five overs or six overs or even more, you go 100% at it. Um, and then Wednesday before the game, I like to taper down where I'll probably bowl in the middle outside. It's at the Wanderers in the middle. And I'll probably bowl six to 12 balls. It's just a run through, just to get through my action, those kind of things. And it depends how much you bowl during the previous two weeks, because it, it plays a massive, massive role where if you went at 40 overs a game, so your workload will be quite high then you actually don't have to bowl that much at practice. But if your workload's not where you want it to be, you can have a good session two days out before the game starts. And then the day before the game, you just taper down. Just go through certain um, checkpoints for me. And I know I'm fine. And I know I ticked all the boxes preparation-wise to give my utmost best on day one. Mm -hmm. So we've got another one here, but it's in Afrikaans. So I had one here in the of my Rony. I get long getter sound with to um Devan for the first span and was for us table gemaakt to us nog een grad acht pas. I will sommer hoor hoe gaan dit met de genre. I think oh yeah wait yeah he did put it in he did put it in English as well for the English guys. I have no idea if you remember me, but I, I made my debut for the first team in high school at the same time as Devan. I played with the genre. How big was the jump from school level to franchise cricket? So, Werner Rasmus okay. asking basically two questions. That's perfect. I think I'm doing. My brother's doing actually very well. Um, he's actually busy. Um, he's working. He stopped playing cricket, although he, I think he wanted to play more cricket, but due to injuries he couldn't, and he's working now. Um, but it's always good to play a bit of backyard cricket when I'm visiting my family. So it's always the, the competition there is massive, by the way. Um, but from school level to, I think if you go from school level to, let's say, when it was still amateur level, um, it was a massive jump for me. Because um, when you're in school, you might be, it might be a couple of guys that stand out where at amateur level, the teams you're playing in, it's 11 guys, that's good. And you're playing it, you're competing all the time. And if you go from there to franchise level, it's exactly the same and guys are just better. And and it's exactly like the, the jump is so massive. And I think I'm a firm believer, you get, you get your Quinnies, you get your KGs where they were young and they got thrown into the broker setup yeah. and they did extremely well. Um, doesn't happen with everyone. I think sometimes, you know, if a young guy, because every young guy wants to play, you know, but I think sometimes it's good just to, like for me, it was great for me to work, play three, four years of amateur cricket before I cracked the knot in the franchise system because I played a handful of games. I think I played like 20, 30 odd games. So I sort of know 
what I need to do. So when you make that step up to the next level, you're not flustered. There will be pressure. It's your debut. Um, you know, you're playing with heroes. You're playing against heroes. You're playing with guys that are so good. And I think it's just knowing when you step onto the field, you you know what you need to do. You sort of, you're still figuring out your game when you're that age, but you mm -hmm. sort of have idea and you have the numbers to back it up. So you don't feel your confidence is lacking or you're flustered or anything like that. And I think it's exactly worth every level you go up in life. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to take the last three now. Um, BSV wants to know, generally, what do Colpac players talk about when they're together in domestic matches here in South Africa, of course? You think that the Proteus domestic standard is par or below or higher than English domestic standard? Um, it's a good question. I think, I don't really know what we talk about. I think just cricket in general or, you know, we might talk about what you did a week or what's the weekend plans, you know, like just normal boring chat um i think that there's not much difference in between county cricket and the franchise cricket um obviously number of games you play massive difference because here you play seven with the finals eight there you play 14 with the finals 15. so that's massive so as uh, for me the more cricket you play, the quicker you learn about your game, the quicker you can improve, the quicker, you know, everything goes for you. And if you have a really good season over, let's say, 14 games, it gives you so much confidence to go to the next level or, you know, to even improve on that. Where seven games, yeah, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying um, it's little, but, mm. you know, the more for younger guys, the more cricket you play, I think the better it is for a cricket player. And I think um, the nice thing when when I'm at Yorkshire is like, you know, when Ruti always plays the first couple of four day games. Um, you know, we have David Milan, Dave Willey, um, Johnny Besto, um, doesn't he plays more T20s um, because he's away with the IPL. Um, you have Joe Root. So you have guys who play international level with so much experience and you learn so much from people like that. Like not even youngsters, me as well. Like just the way they approach a game where, you know, like what they think of, their theories and especially on the field bowling as well because they might see something I don't see. Um, so I think that's the only difference where there's not a lot of pro tier players playing down. Yes, there is a couple, but not everyone. So if you go to Lancashire, Jimmy plays. If you go to Knotts, Stuart Broad plays. You know, like so many guys that play for your county. I'm not saying the whole season, but there is a couple mm -hmm. who plays quite often. I think and it's, it's important for younger guys to learn and you can feed off them. I feel like we, that's where Joe Root is unbelievable because like you'll come in and help the youngsters and, you know, even throw balls to them to improve wow. their game. And it's amazing to see. Yeah. Um, that's what we, we were actually speaking about that at the four day game um, about getting more Proteus players to actually play in the setup, because especially the experienced guys like Dean Alga, et cetera, who, who did so now, but um, yeah, he always so, tends to do it. Yeah. I don't, I'd like, not everyone plays and I understand, especially bowlers. Yeah. If they had a long season, you know, rest and recover because, you know, there's a massive test series coming up against India yeah. now. So I don't expect caging them to play. Yeah. But, you know, when they do play, it is nice for younger yeah. players to watch and the way they operate. You know, because yeah. even me, I'm 29, played more than 100 first loss games. You learn every game. You learn, you learn so much from everyone. Like even in this past three games, yeah, I've learned so much from guys. Like, you know, even see Pamela and he's 23 or 24, I reckon. So you learn from young guys, you learn from experienced guys, you learn from guys that's been here, you know, and from the coaches as well. And I think it's so important. Mm. Uh, the one batsman from the past who you dreamt to bowl to? <laughs> dreamt about bowling to? Any better across the board? <laughs> Good question. 
I'll drink two bowls to Ivy, but I now regretted it. <laughs> <laughs> we actually played um, with the first MSR. No, it was T20 cricket. But I've bowled to him a couple of times at Proteus uh, practice next, next sessions. And it's honestly not fun. But especially at T20 game, it was a, um, it was a warm-up game. And just the way he played, I was like, I have no idea where to bowl. You know, mm-hmm. you sort of like you have a plan and it just goes to waste within two balls. And then you're like, okay, you just hope you don't go for 36. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you know, that's, that... it's a, that's a difficult thing. I think um, when I was at the notch, actually, you know, going back to the first question, Riley was actually difficult to bowl to as well, thinking about it now especially in at practice sessions because you will literally try to eat the ball straight <laughs> and hit your ankles off so you, all you do is you ball slow balls wide or you ball short so you can hit into a side <laughs> neck and you'd like to find <laughs> happy with that that ties in perfectly to this question over here is how do you set up a batter more about is it more about processes and how do you train for the setup in the pra- in practice it's actually a very good question i think you know, if I bowl to, because the past uh, couple of net sessions, you bowl to six batters. So you bowl six overs over to a batter. So for me is like, obviously I know some of the guys now, but my, let's say my first net session didn't, I knew a couple of guys, but like, you know, it's a new system, new franchise, you know, new guys coming through. So I don't know everyone. So for me, you try to keep it as simple as possible. Like I said earlier, mm-hmm. off stump, off stump, irrespective of where you play. That's a good area. Mm-hmm. Um, and it depends the way the batsman plays. So if he comes all at the ball, or he pushes at the ball, you're just hanging there. Or you might try, for me, I'll try swing it away. And if he comes hard at the ball, I feel like I'm in the game. I don't feel like the slips is in play. And it's also like I will see if the guy bats deep in his crease or not, and the way he holds his bat. So those are tiny minor things I pick up where when I bowl in the net. And you, for me, I'm very competitive. I like to get her bats myself in the net because it's just that competitiveness is just there. And you know, mm. when game starts, you're 100% ready. Um, I always say it's like, I don't, especially, I actually don't mind if I struggle a little bit in the net, bowling-wise, because I know when the game comes, I'm not in that comfort zone where I feel like just everything is going to happen the way I want it to happen. You still need to work so hard. You still need to do the right things and do the basics well. Um, but it's it's actually a very good question because it's so difficult if if i only have six balls to a batter at practice it's difficult to set up a guy on six balls yeah. because it means you need to bowl in swing out swing a bouncer you know like and that's it's not the way you should go about it you might bowl you know six balls in the right area and you might play a miss or you might you might actually leave you well but what i would take out from that net be like you know, my energies were good at my energies were good on the ball. Um, I competed every ball, uh, felt strong at the crease. So at my checkpoints as a bowler, because if I if my checkpoint is correct, most often than not the ball will be in the right area. And then you can just play according to the way the batsmen move. Mm. I think it's it's like you said, it's make sure your processes or your checkpoints as a bowler is correct and make sure you know everything is smooth you're not forcing too much because if you force you're not going to get the result that you want and finally given that he's retired now it's an excellent question from trevor and that is what are the lessons you've learned from dale stain uh, unbelievable bowler um just the way he went about his game like there's so many things to be honest with you. Um, so firstly, I played with him when he took 
when he was the leading wicket taker in South Africa and it was like a massive thing for me is to play with one of your heroes, you know, like a players with KG I looked up to, I look up to Mourno, I look up to Vern, you know, from South Africa. And you like, you know, I ticked all those boxes and I was so happy about that. And you just, you feed off things like, you know, like the way he swings, like the new ball, your ball touch and not as quick. And when the old ball comes, it's rapid. And if he gets his tail up, it's no one in the world can stop him. And, you know, you try to do the same in a way, but you're so different. You're so unique. You're both unique to your own, to your own strengths, yeah. your own standards. But just the way you went about the game and where you can turn nothing out of a situation, like to taking four wickets in a spell. Um, for me, it's for me it's interesting because, like, people ask me, you know, who do I look up to as bowlers? And you know, you can name him, you can name Alan Donald, you know, there's so many you can name. But for me, I look up to spells where, like, a movie I like to watch is Fire in Babylon. Like, you know, the way they bowled, it was fire with fire, like. It was hostile, and for me, that's everything. Um, the spell Alan Donald bowled to Michael Asset in England, it was um, unbelievable. Um, it was hostile. Um, the spell that Dale bowled to Brad Allen and P when the ball was reversing, it was unbelievable. Like, And he had so many of them where he just turned it up and you know, like when he played against Pakistan, he took all those wickets, just the way he set Batman up. Um, you know, for me, I look at spells and then obviously Mitch John Johnson in an Ashes series. Um, so I look up to stuff like that. And mm -hmm. that's all I want to be. It's like when it comes to fire, fire, I'm there, I'm competing. And it's in a way, it's like bringing fear to a batsman. But in my mind, it feels like that, you know, and might not be for the best one like that, but for me, it is like that. So I look up to certain spells where I'll be like, just to sit and watch it, it's unbelievable. And I get goosebumps watching it, you know. Um, but Dale is in a league of his own, I think. You know, like, no one will get close to what he's done, like the way he operated. Um, maybe KG wickets wise, but just the way he went about his game is like you can't say him and KG is the same, they're completely different. But yeah. just the way he went about his game, the way he sets batsmen up, and you know, when there was nothing in the wicket, you just, whenever he comes on, you just turn things around, and it's like all of a sudden he gets a snuff and he just rolls the team. Mm. But I think. You know, it was things like that. That's the beauty of the game where it's a team sport. It's not just you as a bowler doing everything. It's as at the end of the day, team bowling at pressure, like at burn, you know, they had Mourne creating different kind of pressures and, and then KG was coming through. So he had one bowler at wild skill you and you have three bowlers you can outskill you and coming at pace. So it's, yeah. it's ridiculous. So so for me, that's great to watch. Duan, thanks a lot for coming on the show. I know I kept you quite long. I didn't expect it to that's go this fine. long, but thanks I a enjoyed lot for it. giving no, you it was time. honestly so good. Thank you so much for me being on the show. Yeah. And thanks a lot for coming on the show. Uh, good luck for the rest of the season. I hope you enjoy the rest of the season. And good luck to the team as well. To the guys out there, please subscribe to Cricket Fanatics Magazine monthly. It's 100% free. Click on the description. Click subscribe to the channel. Smash the like button. Share this with all your friends and family. And we'll see you again tomorrow with another daily show. Take care and good luck. Dwayne. Cheers. Thank you. Bye-bye.